Welcome to Silent Hill Shattered Memories. I'm starting this playthrough just a couple days after finishing my playthrough of Silent Hill 3, and that I started after finishing the original Silent Hill. I'm trying to play them in an order that makes sense story-wise. I played the first game just because it was the first game, and then I played the third one after that because it was the direct sequel to the first game. I'm playing this one as my third Silent Hill game because, although it's not a sequel or a prequel to any of the other games, it is a reimagining of the original Silent Hill. So it's going to be some significant differences, and I'm really curious what those differences are going to be, which is why I want to play it now before all the details of the original Silent Hill game are kind of faded from my memory. Just a note before I get started, this game came out on three different platforms. It originally came out on Wii, and then was later ported to PS2 and PSP. And I originally tried to get this working the same way that I got Silent Hill 3 working, in the PCSX2 emulator, which emulates the PS2. Unfortunately, though, it just doesn't work well. I can get it to be playable, but the cutscenes are totally broken and unpredictable. Like, sometimes they kind of work, other times they really, really don't. So initially I was just thinking, alright, well, forget it. I can't play this game. But then I realized that the idea of playing the Wii version, emulated in the Dolphin emulator, is not really that far-fetched. I already have a little bit of experience using the Dolphin emulator, although that was for playing a GameCube game. Not uh, a Wii game, but apparently it does Wii games just as well. The big awkwardness that I thought would be way too big of a roadblock to, uh, for it to be playable would be the controls. Because the Wii has motion controls. However, although it's going to be very, very awkward, and I've spent like two hours trying to fine-tune the controls to something usable, it is possible to emulate the Wii controls. It's possible to emulate and have a game be playable on a mouse and keyboard when you're emulating the Wiimote plus a nunchuck is I think the control scheme that this game uses. I'll talk more about that once we get in game. For now, let's just go ahead and start. Oh, wait, one more thing. Uh, this game was made not by Team Silent, which was the internal group within Konami that developed Silent Hill 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, but this game was actually made by a studio called Climax. I've never heard of them, but really the, the interesting part about it to me is that the designer and writer of this game is Sam Barlow, who you might know as the person behind Her Story. I love that game. It was really good, and I had no idea Sam Barlow was involved in the Silent Hill franchise. Okay, let's begin. Sweetie.
Yes? The new patient is here. They're early. That's fine. We can start now. I'm glad you came. Just turning up shows your commitment to the process. Good. I've read your notes. The other therapist didn't work out for you. I want you to know this will be different. We take this at your pace. No notes. No drugs. No theories. We go back to the start. Understand what happened. Take a look at this short form. I promise it's the only one you'll see during your therapy. Try to answer truthfully. It's easier that way. I make friends easily. False. Having a drink helps me relax. False. I always listen to other people's feelings. True. I prefer abstract ideas. False. I've enjoyed roleplay during sex. False. Working to a plan or schedule is best. True. Before I answer this last one, by the way, at the very beginning of the game, before what I actually started recording, but like during the intro screens when you're just getting into the menu, it says that this game psychologically profiles you and and changes the game based on who you are. So I'm guessing your answers to these questions probably influence what happens in the game, at least a bit. I've never cheated on a partner. True. Never cheated on a partner, really? Okay. Let's get started then. Cheryl! Cheryl? Sweetie? Oh my god. Cheryl? 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 Cheryl! Just had to change the setting real quick. Something accidentally got reset. Uh, yeah, I was making my my pointer be like below where the center of the flashlight beam is, but now that's fixed. Uh, there's supposed to be snow here. I think it'll start appearing in just a minute when I start moving. So I'll probably talk more about the controls as I go, but just a quick idea of how I've got it mapped. Uh, basically, where the pointer is, imitating the Wii Mote, is assigned to my mouse. So my mouse is acting like where the Wii Mote is pointing. Um, WASD is being used for what would be... Oh, there we go, now the snow's appeared. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, WASD is being used for the movement. I'm not exactly sure what that's emulating, but something. Shift is used for sprint. Um, at some point, Harry is going to get a cell phone, and that requires use of the D-pad and a couple other things, so I just especially mapped that to the numpad. 
Also, it's important to be able to tilt things sometimes. Like, it, it's actually literally required to be able to, like, get a key in the beginning, as we'll see pretty soon. So to that, I actually mapped to holding down the tab key, the mouse becomes, like, moving the mouse while holding down the tab key makes the movement like this stop working and makes it start tilting instead. So there's a lot of funky stuff going on. So sorry if I uh, get confused about the controls all the time. I think playing this game is going to be a struggle, but I'm up to the task. So, right off the bat, this beginning is very similar to the original Silent Hill. I mean, I'm Harry, Cheryl's missing, we come into Silent Hill by crashing our car and then just like waking up and looking for Cheryl since they've disappeared. So that's all very similar. But the whole framing of this being basically going back into our memories while uh, going to a therapist or a psychologist, that's obviously completely different. And also notes how at the very beginning when I first clicked on start game, notice that we were looking at a home movie of Cheryl and Harry, and how it kept getting rewound back to the beginning, and then back to the beginning, and then back to the beginning, looking at this happy memory of, of Cheryl saying, I love you, Daddy. I get the feeling that was looked like that tape was being viewed long after this encounter here in Silent Hill. Them looking back on the fond memories of their daughter, who I guess they probably don't get back if they're fondly looking at that memory. I found that pretty sad, because, yeah, I don't think they'd be watching it like that if they were happily living with Cheryl in the present. Hey, teddy bear. Oh, also, uh, regardless of the fact that this is on a Wii, so the controls are a bit different just because of that, but even on the PS2 version, the control scheme for this game is completely different from Silent Hill 1 and 3 and 2, although I haven't played that one, but I've seen it. It's very similar to the others. Um, yeah, so normally in the other Silent Hills, you have tank controls and you have fairly fixed camera angles or like semi-fixed. They kind of move around and follow you, but you don't really have direct control over the camera unless you enter that special view mode, but even that's kind of funky and you have pretty limited controls in that case. Uh, but this is completely different. There's, they're not tank controls. Um, you can just, like, WASD, like any typical game, as you'd expect. You can strafe and all of that. And it's camera relative, not character relative. Um, and we are obviously over the shoulder of third person. So it controls totally different, and it just feels totally different. I mean, that is such a major change to something that I'm so used to in the Silent Hill series. That's actually huge. It's not Cheryl's. Looks like a picture book and a bunch of Polaroids on the ground. Oh, Silent Hill. <laughs> yeah, there's like a thing when it comes to doors where if you start to open it immediately and then just don't press anything, nothing happens, you have to actually, like, press forwards? Like, you can, like, gradually open the door, although it's so fast that it doesn't really look all that gradual. It's so, like, if you just tap it, it does that. If you hold it down, it does this. It's kind of interesting. It's a little bit funky. Uh, but that's also a major, major change compared to the previous Silent Hills that I played. Normally, if you go through a door, it's just, it's its sort of like, I think Resident Evil does a similar thing where it's complete safety. You know, even if a monster is about to strike you, if you click on a door and you can go in it, then it just starts to load another room and you're 100% safe during that transition. But here, you actually exist while opening the door. Oh, yeah, and there's a prex, press X to Cheryl button. Cheryl? 
which just makes me think of Heavy Rain. <laughs> Press X to Jason. Cheryl! However, I noticed something super cool about it. Cheryl! Notice how Harry's yelling? Cheryl! Cheryl! Because we're outside and there's snow and everything and wind. Watch what happens when we try to call for Cheryl inside. Sweetie? Cheryl? Sweetie? Yeah, so they recorded different, like, volumes, whether they're trying to talk over the environment or, you know, in an enclosed, fairly quiet environment. They recorded different versions of the call for Cheryl. It's really cool. Cheryl. I've got the tutorial turned on. That's what those prompts are. Telling me how to look at stuff. Kings. Beer. Looks like orange juice. I don't know if it's just the tutorial area, but I haven't been able to get descriptions out of many things. Like all these things, Cheryl? I can't Gotta find Cheryl. seem to really examine them. It might just be sort of tutorial beginnings, trying to limit the amount of interactions you have. I don't know. And I have played it for about a half hour, just trying to get the controls dialed down so I'm familiar with these areas. I love those footsteps. Good fully. Oh, I never went in here. Uh, cheerleader or okay. Bunch of garbage. Oh my god, this place is disgusting. <laughs> this place is just used for storage. Storage of... Literally beers... Beers and chips. Is that the plunger just stuck in there? Left in there? Okay. Silent Hills sucked them up before they could get rid of that clog. Yeah, that's the thing about me having played for like a half hour or so, is I was playing very mechanically, just trying to get to situations where I might need to change the controls. I wasn't really like looking at the environment or anything. Steal the money out of the cash register. Damn it. I think that's where I need to go. Can I open this? Cheryl! Nope. Here's where they introduce something interesting. They introduce something very frictional games esque. Maybe this was just common on the Wii because of the motion controls, but I just think and associate it with frictional games where you could actually, yeah, world interaction, you can actually grab stuff and move it. I wonder how they did this on the PSP and PlayStation 2. Did they leave it basically the same, but just made it so you have to, like, move a cursor around and then hold down A or something to, to grab it? I don't know, but uh, I can open it because this lock is in there. Whoop. It's pretty cool. Also another major change for the Silent Hill games. I don't know how much use they're going to make of that sort of thing, but it feels really good. Z to run. I guess shift is assigned to Z on the Wiimote. Café Noir.
Hell of a snowstorm, huh? I mean, <laughs> look at this pile of snow. Oh my god. Literally a natural barrier of snow. At Bakken, your family's our priority. Because life is too precious. I think we have a choice here. I've been in either one of these. Yeah, I can go to either this camera store or that thrift store over there, and I think both allow me to continue in the game. So it's like a split, I think? Um... Let's go here. This camera store. Cameras, TV, and appliances. Right, forgot about that sound. Sweetie? Cheryl. You're fielding your calls? Christ, my wife just told me about the video. You think I'm gonna let you get away with that? You wipe our wedding video? You knew that was the only copy. You can't replace that. Watch your backs. Man, I'm already noticing stuff that's changed from my previous times playing this. Just the beginning part. Because I played the beginning part many times trying to tweak everything. Um, I'm pretty sure the location of the thrift store and the location of this store maybe change sometimes. Or I, I think once maybe this was the only store that appeared and the thrift store was inaccessible for some reason. Here though I, I definitely saw that I could get to the thrift store. And also, last time I was in here, this message, it was basically the same message, but it was a woman's voice. This time it's a man's. Unlock somewhere else. Often Harry will find his path blocked by a locked door. He should search nearby for the means to unlock it, a key or some other mechanism. Oh yeah, and did you see that? There's like, there's a lot of viewing uh, a VHS tape effects. It's like an aesthetic that they use quite often in the game. It's really cool. Unlock somewhere else. Got a little... Server farm? No, it's not a server farm. It's like a... Burning station for... Burning lots of CDs or DVDs, I think. <laughs> a happy couple. Whoa. I also have never done that. I think just looking at it maybe activated that description. Okay, this is going to be a test of the tilt controls. So, there's a door release button, but for some weird reason that I don't really understand, we have to be looking at the door on the security cam feed to actually have this work, otherwise it just does nothing. So, let me try my tilt. Please work. Yes! Oh my god, I can actually use it! I'm using tilt controls emulated on a keyboard and mouse, I love this. Alright. So yeah, there's a million... I didn't really look up at the ceiling, but there's a lot of security cams in and around this place. That's the one I need. It's the one at the door. So we need that, and then this.
Oh, I love this. Do not climb. Harry's a bad, bad boy. Harry's a damn good climber. Whoa. Ghost of Cheryl, I think. Looks like they're holding a teddy bear, the same one that was in the car. Yeah, and they look like VHS static, or just like TV static. It's that whole, like, TV memories aesthetic. I wonder how much they're going to change the story of Silent Hill. You know, like, is Cheryl still lost here because they've been called here by uh, Dahlia Gillespie trying to reunite Alessa's soul with its other half so that they can birth the god from their womb? Is that still a thing? Oh, you can even climb this. Yeah, the whole climbing thing is so different from the other Silent Hills. Normally something like this would just be like, oh, you'd look at that and think, don't waste your time. You can't do anything with it. But here, stuff like this is, hey, maybe I can climb that. Strange. Is that the same teddy bear? All right, so we need a key for that door over there, and it happens to be back here. This is where I first discovered, I think. Yeah, this is where I first discovered that you need tilt controls. Oh my god. This varies too. These cans were a different color in other playthroughs. Weird how all this stuff changes. I wonder why such small, subtle things change. I wonder if big things change as well. Um, yeah, first time I played through this, I didn't realize tilt controls existed until this point because I kept trying to pick up these cans. Whoa. And you notice one has a key in it. Which is, this is a super cool interaction, by the way. Like, this is a level of interactivity Silent Hill has never come even close to having. I was just messing with the cans for a long time, but then I discovered that I can't get the damn key out of it. You can't, like, grab the can from the bottom and have it, like, turn upside down. It always defaults to the center to grab the can. You have to specifically tilt it. So that's when I went looking at the controls and thought, oh, I should probably assign something to the ability to tilt. So now I can do this. I really hope they make good use of those interactive objects. <laughs> Look at that wall of snow. Snow never gets that high, right? I mean, even in the worst blizzard. I mean, maybe if it was a totally abandoned city and nobody ever plowed it, ever, but it's weird. That's always been the thing with Silent Hill. It always feels unreal, not just because of the monsters, but just physically stuff is just weird and doesn't make sense. Like, just look at this and realize oh, we can't leave, right? No, no one's going to drive out of here. You could probably climb over these walls of snow. I mean, almost definitely. Unless it's super, super powdery and you would just sink into it, but... You certainly aren't going to drive out of here. There's only those two places on the road to get out of here, otherwise you're just going on foot somewhere. Keep that in mind with the conversation we're about to have in this diner.
You okay, sir? Not a good night to be out and about. I'm looking for my daughter. Take a seat. Your daughter. Go on. We were in a car accident. When I came to, she was gone. Maybe she went to get help. She a clever girl? Sensible? Yeah, I think so. She's seven. Her name's Cheryl. Here's a photo. Cute. Harry Mason. Levin Street. Your ID says you live on Levin Street. That's a few blocks from here. Levin Street, yeah. Yeah, that's where I live. Uh-huh. You feeling okay, Harry? Any headache? Nausea? Blurred vision? A bit of all of them. Maybe she went home. That makes sense. Harry? Your phone? My phone? Right. They hung up. A lot of problems with phones on account of the storm. Maybe that was your little girl. She could be trying to call me from home. All units, please respond. Unconfirmed reports of a potential looting on Finney Street. Shit. I need to follow this up. It's okay. I'll head home. I'm sure she's there. Tell you what. Soon as I'm done, I'll meet you over there. Levin Street. Thanks. Take care. Telling me how to take out the phone. I'll do that in a second. Look at that VHS effect again. So cool. So, that conversation. They said they're gonna go respond to that call. Like, in this city, a dispatcher, or was that another police officer, was telling them that, hey, we, like, we need your help. Come on over to this place. I'm, I'm sorry, how is anybody doing anything in this storm? And how is that person who just left gonna drive there? They can't leave. There's literally like 10 to 15 foot walls of snow blocking the street in both ways. Normally I would say that's just like, I don't know, really weird design because those snow walls are obviously meant to be barriers that prevent you from going places they don't want you to go. But because this is Silent Hill and everything is just odd, I don't think it's just like weird design. I think it's intentional. There's always that feeling of surrealism and nonsensicalness about this place. So this was as far as I played, by the way. I got to this diner and then I messed around with the phone. That's when I realized I needed to make some new controls. And then I stopped. So let's check out the phone. I didn't do much with it when I was messing around with it before. But this is also obviously a completely new thing that was never in the old Silent Hills. You have a cell phone and you can do all sorts of things with it. This really is a very innovative Silent Hill game. They did so much. Um, so we can save. Yes, overwrite. Yeah, look at that VHS effect. So let's look at everything we have on here. Phone book for home. Call them again. Call us again. Hello? Cheryl? Sweetie? Damn! Yeah, just a small noise. A little tick. And then nothing. Oh, we can just free dial? Whoa. I bet... I bet that's gonna come up in puzzles, and also... Man, that makes me want to dial every phone number I find. What's this? Oh, you can reach the phone book from there. Uh, we have a gallery where we can look at pictures that we take, because we can take pictures with our phone. Phones can do that. Check this out. And I'm wondering if this is also going to be used for puzzles. You know, like how I write codes down and stuff that I found in the environment in the original Silent Hills? Well, I guess I could just do this instead. 
Just took it. Uh, save it. Saving in progress. So I think these are actually hard saved to your Wii. Wii's don't have memory cards. <laughs> this isn't a PS2. I don't think they have memory cards. And then now we can view that. Uh, there is a map. This I'm a little bit worried about because the map is so buried. You know, I gotta open my phone and then navigate to the map and then press another button to zoom into the map. It's quite a few key presses away. Whereas in the original Silent Hills, it was just one key press away. And I relied on the map so much. So I'm worried I'm gonna be annoyed by having to access it so deep into a, a menu. But one super cool thing is you can draw on the map. You can draw on the freaking map. That's amazing. Like, that is such a cool idea. I don't know how much I'm going to use it. I don't know how important it's going to be. But the idea of actually doing some of your own, like, cartography in Silent Hill is so cool. Because the maps are so important in the game. They're really vital. And they have a personality of their own because of what characters write on them and how they write on them. There's no legend, is there? Nope. How do I zoom? D-pad up? Oh, I guess that's all the way zoomed in. This place is huge. Oh, Toluca Lake, yeah. If there was any doubt we were in Silent Hill, which there wasn't, but definitely Silent Hill. This makes me think that we're going to be going around town more than we are going to be spending a lot of time in one place. Because we spent a lot of time in places like the school in the original Silent Hill, Algamilla Hospital. In Silent Hill 3, we spent a lot of time in uh, Brookhaven Hospital and some other places. You know, there wasn't really that much movement in the town itself. This makes me think maybe there will be. There's Bachman Road. Bird Street. Anyway. Messages, no messages, camera, settings. Is that game settings? Speech volume. Are these game settings? Or is this like phone speech volume? I... I don't know. I, I'll turn it up a bit. Uh... I can do different ringtones, but it doesn't play them, so I don't know what they sound like. Uh, sure, ringtone 5. Vibrate on. That's fine. Not that my mouse is going to vibrate. Logs. Dialed calls. Receive calls. Messages received. Photos taken. Call time. Hm. Okay. So yeah, if I want to open my phone, I got to use my right hand um, to go from the mouse to the d-pad. A little bit strange, but I think it'll work out okay. Oh yeah, and I can also just do save states with Dolphin, like that. State not found. Oh, thank god that didn't work. I forgot, my settings got reset. I gotta change the controls for save state. That tried to load a state that didn't exist. That could have really screwed me. Well, that's another weird thing. When I was in here before, Harry commented on these cigarettes being advertised. Huh. Yeah, we got a thing down here. This town is home to many lost and discarded objects. Although these mementos have no practical value or purpose, they once meant something to someone. Yeah, that's really strange. They say they have no practical value or purpose. So, does that mean I'm not going to be finding objects that I can use to solve puzzles? Or does it just mean that there's like a special class of objects called mementos that aren't practical, and then there's other things that are practical that you need? See, I don't know if there's an inventory system. 
Here, let me tilt. Covering himself with light as with a cloak, stretching out the heavens as a curtain. Psalm 104, 2. Cost 9.93. I love that beat up old sticker on the bottom of it. I love how close you can examine stuff. You can really zoom in. It's not some games have zooms that just barely do anything, but this one like really lets you get in there. So we stored our memento. I don't know how to access that memento, by the way. That is a mystery that I have not discovered. <laughs> I still love those walking sounds, they're so good. That's either Elvis or an Elvis... Elvis alike, I guess. Alright, so I think we're supposed to continue back here, right? Nah. <laughs> well, Harry just answered that. We're supposed to go out to the street and then try to find our way to um, our street. See if Cheryl's at our apartment. All right, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. This is where I left off when I was testing the game, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to head back to our street, see if Cheryl has just run home, and everything from this point on in the next episode is going to be completely fresh to me.